for publicity, they used to drop butterfingers out of airplanes on people. And on one of these trips, some kid won a contest and got to ride along on one of the airplanes. And this was his first trip on an airplane. This kid was Paul Tibbetts, who went on to fly the airplane that dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. The first M in the name stands for one of the two creators, Forrest Mars Sr., who is the son of Frank Mars, who's the guy who started the Mars Company. The second stands for Bruce Murray, who is the son of the president of rival company Hershey. So these two teamed up and made M&Ms together. The confusion worked and made them popular, but Babe Ruth wasn't happy that he wasn't getting money from it. So he made his own candy called Ruth's Home Run Candy with a note on it saying Babe Ruth's Own Candy. And the Curtis Company sued them and said their candy wasn't named after him, but rather after former President Grover Cleveland's daughter, Baby Ruth, who died of diphtheria at age 12 in 1904. Coming at you live from New York! It's Tennis Podcast. This is episode number 268, and here with me now is the very dandy mm-hmm. Daniel Zaffron. Dandy. Bill Hartman! <laughs> uh, we're off to a great start. Um, <laughs> listener, if you recognize that man's voice over there, it's because he's been on the show a few times, most recently on number 251 where we talked about the top 10 most divisive foods in America. And we learned on that episode that Daniel is a stuck up little bitch when it comes to what goes inside of his mouth. I mean, a lot. I I welcome a lot of things. I just don't like all of them. So I'm welcoming. Uh, you know, this happened last night. We Are you familiar with Too Good To Go? What is that? It's an app that you like basically stores and restaurants when they have food that they didn't sell during the day you can get it for like a discounted thing and you can pick it up but anyway we just picked one up last night and it was a bag full of scones which is like my mortal enemy in the food world is a bag full of scones you like scones but oh, they're fine i i oh well mortal enemies strong though they're like muffins made with cement <laughs> but i remember you really just like cheese last time do, i do, do you hate you hate scones more than cheese depends on the cheese i would say i hate all scones i don't hate all cheese oh it was mozzarella you hate right no i love parmesan. mozzarella parmesan is the one parmesan you is i mean i'm sure there's you know like some sort of deep in some cave in france there's a cheese that i would hate more than parmesan but you know, by your standard cheeses, yes, I would say Parmesan is my least favorite. So you have multiple mortal enemies. That I well, I mean, heavy is the crowd, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and heavy is our bellies, perhaps after this episode, because I don't know what we're talking about. You brought the list today. I'm worried about it, but you did let me know it might be food related. So is you want to hear the little introduction I wrote? No. <laughs> Oh, okay. Let me just cut off 75% of my notes then. From Great. This. Let me, okay, so this isn't the roast of Nick. No, that's next week. Stuff. <laughs> my wife is in uh, that one next yeah. week. Tom, Tom Brady's going to destroy you. <laughs> my parents are hosting the one after that. They have it weekly. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's like a, it's a, it's like a telethon roast of that never ends and nobody benefits. <laughs> so, all right, here's hello everyone. And no. Welcome to the Tennis Podcast. This is your host as always, Daniel Zaffron from the Candy is Dandy Candy Review Podcast. I snuck my plug in there. You're loving this, I can see. My it guess this you didn't sneak it in. It wasn't sneaky, it was just there, part of the sentence, but go on. <laughs> My guess that no, it was pretty sneaky. I feel my guest this week, much like Beetlejuice, needs no introduction because people are too oh. afraid to speak his name. That's you. That's where you come. Oh, in. oh okay. I'm Beetlejuice. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're Beetlejuice in this. I wanted to make this list Beetlejuice like somehow tied into Beetlejuice because he keeps coming up in every well Frank and Weenie, because but you it always keep leads to him up just in time for the new movie. I, you know, I was kind of thinking like, come September, we've got to do like the ten scariest things Beetlejuice has ever done. <laughs> Number one, come out with a sequel no one asked for. <laughs> Number two, hung out with Alec Baldwin. <laughs> so the list I've brought in for once this time that I'm I, I don't I really didn't want to look like an idiot this time because I felt so stupid in the last one that like it's really hard to try to guess ten things. Well, I'll show you how it's done today. Don't worry. Oh. 
I was going to show me how stupid someone can sound on a podcast. I can't wait to see what the what the, what the pinnacle for that. Is. Yeah, I want to see <laughs> a pinnacle. How, how stupid someone can sound before the FCC shuts off this podcast. So what we, what we're doing today? I you know we in the main feed on main as people say we haven't done something candy related with me explicitly just candy related okay yes so this is going to be the top 10 most sugary chocolate bars <laughs> it's so specific okay there's caveats here kind of so this list is from spoon university which i got an honorary doctorate of from course. gives yeah, me a from- discount at any applebee's in the contiguous united states have you, have, you ever visited the, the honor roll there but the, it's like it's the dean's sushi roll actually is, <laughs> is what i'm on <laughs> we don't eat sushi with a spoon daniel we gotta work on that a what how do you eat it this list is from 2016 It's based off of how many grams of sugar per serving as listed on the wrappers of these candies. Is this this is a good list, right? This is a good concept. No, no. No. we're here and it's too late, so let's just do it. (laughs) I could whip up a a new one really fast. So, okay, so here's the things you got to keep in mind with this list. So they are your average chocolate bars that you find readily at a grocery store. So it's nothing, you know, like oh, this specialty store. Right. Chocolate. <laughs> um, so there's also, okay, there's a couple spots here that are a multi way tie. So I'll allow any of your answers in those spots, you know, that counts for that spot to make it easier. And you won't look as stupid as I did uh, on this show. I'm really making this easy for you. Well, it, you're right. It was easy it to make you look stupid. All I had to do was welcome you to the show and or the job was done. But today, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking to guess successfully in correct order. The most sugary chocolate bars today, they're all name brand chocolates that most name people brand recognize. Chocolates. But so you say today, remember that this list is from 2016. So the candy world since then has been hit with a lot of shrinkflation. Thanks, Obama. So since the sizes on most of these have gone down, so has the sugar amount today. At the same time, some companies are diluting their sugar by adding diluting their sugar but diluting their chocolate by adding more sugar and one on the list has had a major recipe change a little hint since this has come out but i also i know i as i as i was going deeper into this i was like i gotta i gotta i gotta warn my good friend nick (laughs) and you're like the other caveat is they all start with the letter h and they're all manufactured in pennsylvania and like we get to the point where like there's (laughs) two things on the list and it's it's well i don't i don't even want to say the thing that you're saying uh for for fear that it might show up like beetlejuice but i also have at the end i have today's amounts of sugars that they have just for comparison but before we get started one last thing would you care to define what a chocolate bar is because this has been something that's come up on our show several times and when you say our show you mean your show right candy is dandy a tennis podcast yes our show <laughs> our. i forgot you're the host Sorry. um okay what is a chocolate bar that was the question well, how would you define that a sheet of <laughs> oh, i could stop you right there those go on your bed no, I, I'm sheetless on my bed. <laughs> how how bohemian. A chocolate bar is a, a rectangular... I don't know how to define it, actually, now that I'm here. It's, it's something it's edible. It's hard. Yeah. Uh, it's edible, and it's made of cocoa. Uh, <laughs> it's made from the cocoa bean to make chocolate, and you eat it, and it's typically sold and manufactured and marketed toward children, although adults enjoy them as well. I feel like that was a backhanded uh, Andy is dandy, but saying that only children... <laughs> no, no one's listening to that podcast, don't worry. You don't have to worry about it, that. It can't be a FCC backhanded already if it doesn't hit anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the FCC and the FDA came up after that one. So, but what about like, because people kind of use interchangeably a chocolate bar and a candy bar. Yeah, you're right. Because... I feel like this is more of a sort of non-American issue because I feel like I've been asked this more by Canadians of like, I was about to do a British accent, but like, what, what would you like, what would you consider a candy bar versus a chocolate bar? A. a? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, um, I don't know why you're talking to Canadians. There's nothing good can come from that. Um, secondly, um, trying to get the difference- healthcare. The difference is uh, a candy bar can include chocolate, but it's not required to include chocolate. And a chocolate bar has to have chocolate in it. And it has to be, I would say, mostly chocolate. I think that's kind of the technical answer of like a chocolate. Because there have been candies that have been like, you cannot call yourself 
a candy, a chocolate bar because you have a peanut in it or something like, I think a chocolate bar has to be just chocolate, you know, like it can't have caramel in it. Really? Okay. Is that how the list is today? This list gets a little lenient with the term. So I'm going to say, no, that is not how this list defines well, a chocolate because bar. Like an all, like a Hershey's with almonds has nuts in it. Would that not be a chocolate bar? If you ask a Canadian, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like I said, I'm not going to ask a Canadian anything ever. Well, so, if you want to live in your echo chamber, then yes, it is a chocolate bar. <laughs> a chocolate bar echo chamber. Yeah. Have you Where seen you the go new to social s- network called <laughs> just chocolate? The chocolate book is yeah. what I want to call it. Oh, wait. Yeah, the chocolate. Okay. Whatever. The chocolate book. Yeah. I, the, yeah we'll drop we the go. the later. So right. I, I, I've got the list already whenever you want to start making a fool of yourself. So this list with 20,000 caveats and may or may not include actual chocolate bars or candy bars. Got it. It's all Parmesan, actually, on this <laughs> list. <laughs> Your last caveat is, oh, and you have to remember when you're guessing, none of these are actually chocolate or candy. (laughs) We're going to redo the last one, the last episode I was on, and I want you to be the dumb one. This is just my revenge fantasy played out. (laughs) And you just try to pass it off without... Without me questioning. Uh, Wrong, it's Brussels sprouts. (laughs) All right. Um, So these are chocolate bars as of 2016 with the highest, is it percentage of sugar or grams of sugar? grams of sugar per serving, which I'll tell you the serving size, but it's for all of them. It's it's just, you know, the whole thing. Regular size, not king size, not mini size, not fun size. Let's go with, uh, I'll say the crunch bar is... In the top five, but not number one. I'll put it around number three or four. So if you get one right, but your number is wrong, how do I shame you? (laughs) No, you actually just, on your side, reorder the list in real time to where my (laughs) guesses become correct, even if they weren't when I said it. This is why I needed to have a hard copy so that things (laughs) couldn't happen. Things like this couldn't happen. Okay, well, the crunch bar... I'm guessing it is on here. It is on here. But it's not number three or four. It is not. It is not even in the top five, I will give you that. All right, let's go number eight. Close, but wrong. <laughs> okay, now at this point, you can just tell me. <laughs> no. I okay, want seven. you to sweat. Oh, it is seven. Crunch bar <laughs> is number seven. How that okay, is stupid. I'm so humiliated. <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. All right. Yeah, it doesn't feel so good. So Crunch Bar is 23 grams per bar of sugar. And uh, I've got I've got some factoids about the Crunch okay. Bar while you recompose yourself after that spanking. You just <laughs> in front of everybody. 23 grams per serving, but what if we only had multiple sugar. servings per session then the, the the math is impossible on that <laughs> okay you got it right, please tell me your factoids so the crunch bar was released in 1938 by nestle they are crisps crisp rice enrobed in chocolate the reason they started making these was because it was the depression and rice was much cheaper to put in a candy bar than nuts or caramel were so it was a, it was a cost-cutting measure to use rice instead. But they just stuck with it after. When you find a way to save money, you don't go back from that. And this is why I'm a big proponent of AI. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, as we both are. The Crunch Bar, um, well, I'll let you keep going, but I will say I I am a fan. I am a supporter of the Crunch Bar. I I am a fan of the Crunch Bar, although when we tried them on... I'll sneak it in again. Candy is dandy, the Candy Review Podcast. It, uh, boy, was that sneaky. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> they're not so much crunchy as they are. They're, they're more crunch isn't the word. It's kind of like spring, maybe like springy. Are you okay? Or chewy, you know? I'm worried about you. Are you all right? What candy are we talking about? Uh, but you just tried it, to tell me that the crunch bar is springy c- because the, the rice gets kind of stale by the time it gets to us, you know? So, like, I've had the Ghirardelli version of a crunch bar, and that actually is crunchy and crisp. These aren't crisp. crisp they're good, but they're the not word. crisp. Yes. Crispy. Not they're not springy. crispy. They're squishy. They're, okay, I'll give you that, that they're more crispy than crunchy. The crunch bar is, right? That's what you're trying to say? I would say they're, I would dare say they're more crunchy than crispy. They should be called crisp. <laughs> But they aren't, you know? Like, you don't get, like, a crisp when you bite into one. But I will say that the fun-size ones that are kind of like Lego 
thickness, those are better. Those are better than a regular I agree. And have you had the off-brand one that I think maybe the Hershey company makes, which is uh, is Crackle Crackle with a K? I I prefer a Crackle, actually. I I think I do too, but they don't make that in a full size, do they? I've never seen one. I've seen a full size Mr. Good Bar. (laughs) Okay, well, do you... Hang on, let's stop the show. I need to get your autograph real quick because you've seen a full size Mr. Good Bar. Holy shit. I mean, you see the picture hanging behind me, me, Mr. Full Size Mr. Good Bar. <laughs> you smiling with the full size. All right. Um, tell me more about the Crunch Bar. That's all I have on the Crunch Bar. Oh, okay. So, I mean, is that not enough factoids for you? Interesting. Your- wow. Okay. Well, I, no, that's let, fine. I'm just well, taking. Okay taking note <laughs> i've somehow made myself look stupid in this i can't tell you just from memory that the guy he the guy who made it was a factory worker who would um sneak he worked at nestle and he would sneak chocolate home and he would melt it onto rice krispies himself and then he brought it into work and people loved it and stole the idea oh really so that guy for it. that guy is like not involved at all after that no the, i mean again wow. AI is the way to go. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, the Crunch Bar, off the top of my head, I haven't put thought into this before now, but I'd say it's in my top 10 favorite chocolate candy bars. That's personally. fair. I, I might agree with you. It definitely wouldn't be top five like you stupidly thought it was on this list, but I, I think I might put it in top 10. This reminds me, actually, that when you were here for a bonus episode on Tennis Pod Plus, we did the movie theater candy draft, and I want to say we both wanted to draft Bunch of Crunch at number one. I think so. Is it that right? The, yeah, it was the, uh, the Connor McDavid of the... <laughs> <laughs> fantasy movie candy draft we were fighting trying to trying to negotiate behind the scenes who gets to pick it but yeah Cr- bunch of crunch is the best movie candy i agree so why is it that like a crunch bar is good but i could kind of take it or leave it bunch of crunch though like gets me wet so like what is it about <laughs> this it's it the same me, thing it gets me springy <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I, I i think that it's the size is what the the like tiny of the bunch of crunch is what excites me oh it excites you okay <laughs> gets me spurgy yeah but, but it's just it's just interesting how like the same i assume it's 100 percent the same ingredient. the only difference is the portion you know not the portion but the uh, the size of it the size of each bite i really think there's something about you know it's 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 like sweet popcorn almost like it's almost the same size as a piece of popcorn like you could just throw them back bro i get in trouble with those bunch of crunch because they come in the box right i'll just tip the thing back and like drink it out of there you know (laughs) which which is that's it tastes good but the box is gone quick and i could go through like eight or nine boxes if someone doesn't stop me but at the same time i couldn't go through eight or nine crunch bars so i really think it is something about how small it is and i believe there's more calories and servings in the box of bunch of crunch than one bar Uh, i would hope so (laughs) with the amount i'm eating hi everyone stephen clark here to say that i think we can all agree that the news these days is almost all bad wars and scandals and insurrections and those goddamn expensive taylor swift tickets but i'm here to tell you that not all news is bad because my number one news source is the Tennis Podcast Newsletter. It's a free monthly newsletter delivered right to my inbox that helps me stay up to date on the latest world news, like a first look at the upcoming Tennis Podcast episodes. Newsletter subscribers like me know the topics for a month's worth of upcoming episodes way in advance. And that means that I knew the topic of the episodes you're listening to right now, like a month ago. It's like I'm a time traveler. Plus, as a newsletter subscriber, I get to consume Dr. Buster's ass. I mean, Dr. Buster's exclusive blog, The Sidekick Corner. It's the next best thing to grabbing a handful of dap booty. If that's not enough, the newsletter also features behind the scenes updates from Nick, merch discount codes, and more. You just go to tennispod.com slash newsletter, enter your email address, and you're in. You'll get the next Tennis Podcast newsletter in your inbox just like that. The link is in the show notes. Now, turn off that boring Fox News and come join me in getting the only news source you truly need, the Tennis Podcast Newsletter. Let me give you another guess. So th- this one is, this one I could see argued whether or not it is a candy bar, chocolate bar, but this is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup because they, they come in a bar-like package, but there's two individual cups inside. 
So is that included on the list? That is if on so, the list. I'll the I, I had the same qualm, but it <laughs> is on the list. There's got to be a lot in that thing. And this is um, a number on the list that is a three-way tie. So you were you are uh, knocking this one out. I'll go five. Mm-mm. Close. Nine. <laughs> you got it. When I say I close, that means go one up. <laughs> got it. But, but all, all this, all this shit, you're, all these hoops you're making me jump through is pointless. Because when I edit this thing, I'm just going to edit it to where I correctly guess every time. Every single wrong guess is gone, and you'll also do it in order in the final. Exactly. Edit. <laughs> yeah, uh, Reese's a standard Reese's peanut butter cups. The serving size is both cups. Uh, this is 21 grams of sugar, so it is less than a crunch bar. A little bit. The re- standard Reese's peanut butter cups, well, not the standard ones, I'll explain. The, they were released in 1928 by Harry Burnett Reese. They are peanut butter cups enrobed in a blend of milk and dark chocolate. That's the second time you've used enrobed. Do, is that? No, I don't think it'll come up again. I can't see how. Okay. <laughs> All right. It, it comes up again is my takeaway. I don't know why you think that. So he originally sold Harry Burnett Reese all sorts of small candies. But when World War II hit with the sugar rationing, he had to focus on the most popular one, which was the peanut butter cups, which the original because they were, you know, they were called penny cup, but before they were called Reese's peanut butter cups. So the original his size name was Reese, right? You did say his, his name, name was penny. Reese. His name was Reese, yes. It okay. was uh, the original size was the um, mini size that we have now. That's the what individually they, wrapped know. ones? Yes. That's yeah. what they would sell at, like, uh, you know, the counter of a grocery store for a penny. Inflation, am I right? Thanks, Thanks Obama. Obama. <laughs> yeah. Say it together, everybody. Well, Reese's, I feel, first of all, it's Reese's, not Reese's, right? Of course it Reese's. is. But, yes. But there, I, it, it doesn't make any sense why people call it Reese's, but it is, agree. It is so powerful of a thing that it makes me wonder, like, is there some reason for it or are people just stupid? It actually makes me angry because it's a person's name, apostrophe S. His name is Reese. Here's the thing about Reese's. Um, and I'm talking about like the full regular size um, now, like the, you know, the two peanut butter cups in the orange wrapper. There, there's less of it inside the wrapper than there is of a crunch bar. That's my problem with the Reese's because based on taste alone, Reese's peanut butter cups is probably my number one favorite chocolate candy. But I sometimes avoid getting it just because it's two bites and it's gone. The only I that's why I always walk out of the store with one of those two pound Reese's peanut butter those novelty <laughs> ones. <laughs> yeah. What what's your opinion on Reese's pieces? Oh, I hate them. I, Do you I'm like sure them? we talked about this too? I, I we must have. Yeah. But I You mean Reese's them. pieces. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Um, Reese's Pieces, they're not as good as Reese's peanut butter cups, but I do love them still. And they're a good backup for me. If there's no bunch of crunch, I'll go for the Reese's Pieces. The problem is that there's no chocolate. It's just peanut butter and candy coating. So it doesn't... Yeah, peanut butter. <laughs> you must be new to the show. Peanut butter is a big thing here. We like peanut butter on this show. I love peanut butter too, but there's something about the sugary coating on peanut butter doesn't do it for me. I, I do not like Reese's Pieces. Do you all remember how I introed the show? I said Daniel was last here when we talked about the top 10 most divisive foods in America, and we learned that he is a stuck-up little bitch when it comes to what goes in his mouth. I know that you've tried to lure me into your house with a trail of Reese's Pieces. I'm not falling for it again. This motherfucker says, I love peanut butter. <laughs> don't love Reese's Pieces. <laughs> okay. It doesn't compute, but all right. I, I would rather have just peanut butter smeared on my palm and licking it off during a movie than have Reese's Pieces. Oh, <laughs> well, that That's an idea. So when you go to the concession stand at the movie theater, you just ask for the straight peanut butter, and they just come with a big knife that they had just dipped in a peanut butter jar, and they just smear it on your hand and arm. And then you go lick it off in the movie. I'm actually okay with that. It's not a bad. I mean, this could be the future of snacking in the movies. Body well, as they get more desperate for moviegoers, you know, in right. this new streaming world we're in. That's an idea to consider. Yeah. AI, am I right? <laughs> yeah, Thanks, exactly. Obama. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> All right. Well, that's Reese's tied for number nine. Tied for number nine. So now you're in kind of a danger zone because you could guess more candies that are on this list, but they could still be number nine. So you'll be stuck in the mud. I'm going to go with another favorite, and that is the Kit Kat bar. Your guess? I'm going to say that's number nine as well. It is also number nine. I knew it. You are. There is still another number nine out there, so be warned. Do you want information on Kit Kat, even though it's kind no. of... Okay. 
I won't tell you a thing about <laughs> Kit Kats. If you tell me anything about Kit Kats, I will fucking kill myself. Just so you know. <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> Um, Kit Kats, well, if they're number nine, that must mean they have 21 grams of sugar. And it was invented by a man named Kit Kat during World War II. And after the war, he sold it for a penny at the register, individually wrapped pieces. Am I, am I right so far? Uh, yeah, everything that is number nine on this list has the ex- same exact history. <laughs> no, I know. That's what I'm saying. And they also, have you ever tried Kit Kat pieces? They were in ET also. They weren't, they were in Mac and Me. <laughs> <laughs> they were. That's a joke, right? <laughs> because that's I actually a, don't know. <laughs> but that's a good one. If it's a joke. If it's and a joke, I'll never it tell. It could also be real and I won't know. <laughs> that's the I mean, beauty I, of Mac and Me. <laughs> I know what Mac and Me is. Isn't that the one that is on the um that Paul Rudd always brings out on it the is. Co- Okay, yeah. I've actually never seen that movie, but I've seen that clip a thousand times. <laughs> you know, there's another clip that should be watched from Mac and Me, which is there's like a ten minute dance sequence inside of a McDonald's that uh you really should sit down with a smear of peanut butter on your wrist and watch one night one evening. I'll do the peanut butter part, but I can't promise on the watch a ten minute dance scene. <laughs> <laughs> Would you prefer if it was Burger King? Uh, no. Okay, so tell me about the Kit Kat. <laughs> uh, the Kit Kat, all right, if you want to know, the Kit Kat was released in 1935 in England. They are wafers containing layers of a chocolatey cream made up partially. The cream is made up partially of ground up Kit Kats, and all of this is enrobed in chocolate. That must be a candy term, enrobed. I don't know what you're talking about. These were made by the Roundtree Company, so they were a spinoff of... They were a much more popular spinoff of the an original candy called Roundtree's Wafer Crisp, and then another spinoff also of Roundtree's Wafer Crisp that they made in Canada ended up being the Coffee Crisp that we talked about before. So Kit Kat and Coffee Crisp are more popular spinoffs of the very boring Round Trees Wafer Crisp. Tried and true regular Kit Kat is my second favorite chocolate candy behind only Reese's. That's also fair. I would put it in top five, I think, because there's something about having a wafer inside of chocolate that just, speaking of eating 10 boxes of them, like I could eat just like a conveyor belt of Kit Kats coming at me. And a wafer inside anything or anyone, also great. But I I have to... S- s- this is your Catholic Church moment. <laughs> This is your big ad for the Catholic Church. A wafer inside anybody is great. <laughs> you think you're better than Jesus? Jesus ate the wafers, too. She actually did. Jesus, you like Kit Kats? Give me a break. Give me a break. That's good. You're in a roll today. The thing That's about Kit Kat, me. much like Reese's, no, it's not. Much like Reese's, it's small. Like, it's a few bites and it's Dunsko. Duns- sorry, Dunski. <laughs> Dunsko is not a thing. <laughs> Dunski is definitely a thing, though. It is. I, I, th- I do agree, but they are more comparable in size to a regular... If you eat all of them, you know, like the raft that they come in, if you eat all of them, that is almost a full candy bar. Do you break them off into pieces I, or do, do you just eat uh, it like one big thing? Like a pan flute? <laughs> That's what I do. I really do. I, I just eat the whole thing. I break them off, but I would like to try it pan flute style. You're corporate children. You're falling into the corporate marketing that Kit Kat does about breaking off a piece. Got it. And I always give it to a friend. <laughs> or is yeah, that well, Twix? So you're choosing left or right, and that will now be my next guess. Twix candy bar, the only candy with the cookie crunch. That's that's on here, yes? Twix is on here okay so i will i will say you have every single guess you've made has been on this list and i right. cannot say the same for myself correct i'm not a jackass one of us is a jackass <laughs> and it ain't me at least not when it comes to candy <laughs> chocolate candy other uh, other areas i might very well be a jackass up for debate twix will put it number four you were doing so well eight no three no five uh close but in a different way six it is it is six, and six is a five way tie. Holy so shit. So you have got the six out of the way. So just every candy that's ever existed is on this list, I guess. It's number six, pretty much. So a Twix has twenty four grams, and that is both pieces is twenty four grams total. Twix was released in nineteen sixty seven, also in England. They are shortbread cookies covered in caramel enrobed in chocolate. They did not come to the United States until nineteen seventy nine. Really? Wow. It seems pretty late, but that's when they came. The name is a portmanteau of the words twin and sticks. 
Twix. Wow, how'd they ever think of that one? <laughs> <laughs> some marketing genius well you know i laugh we laugh about that but that's really what happened like they yeah. were probably batting names around in a boardroom somewhere someone came up with twix and the rest is history as they say the don draper had his epiphany and they said twix it's true and i have to say like we haven't really talked about it much but the marketing campaigns behind these candies are so ingrained in pop culture for decades. Think about, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar, and the Twix, maybe not decade, it's been like a decade maybe, but the left Twix, right Twix thing is really <laughs> clever, and it's been successful. That's much like the Reese's Reese's thing of like, they talk about it so much that I started thinking, well, what is the difference between the left and right Twix? Right, you're a jackass. We, we <laughs> talked about that. But I made the list. That's not possible. <laughs> There's no difference, Daniel. They're the same thing. Uh, I'll get back to you in a, a, a few thousand calories. Okay. Twix, um, well, you're probably going to tell me about... Oh, you already told me. They were I, I told okay. you everything I know about Twix is... I love Twix, but to me, a Twix is... Twix is probably in my top 10, but near the bottom of the top 10. They can't come close to Reese's or Kit Kat for me. I feel the same exact way. That my, take on, my take on Twix, which is a new segment on my show, uh, which is the Tennis Podcast, is that it may be better than candies I would put higher on my list, but I have it lower on my list, you know? No, I don't know. Like, I think a Twix is a probably better candy than a Crunch Bar, but I might put a Crunch Bar above a Twix on my overall rankings. You mean just like quality-wise? Just like... Yeah, just like objectively, what's a better... Okay, objectively, yeah. ...candy, but I prefer other things. Twix, I kind of have to be in the mood for it, kind of, kind of candy. Like, I could eat a Kit Kat a trillion times a day and be and be asking for more but a twix i feel like i'd get tired of after uh, after the first one or two the shortbread cookie inside is another wafer sort of thing of like it'll keep me coming back for more but will i be happy with myself no let's find out <laughs> <laughs> tune in tune in at 10 it's kind of like dr buster's booty clap it, it'll it'll get you coming back for more but you will not be happy with <laughs> no, yourself you later. Be happy no. Well, okay, Twix at number six, and there's four other number sixes, right? There are. So don't so there's two quagmires you could get stuck in. Okay, well let's go with another one with a really successful marketing campaign, and that's hungry, grab a Snickers, because Snickers satisfies. And I'll go Snickers tied for number six. Wrong. Right about Snickers, but wrong about six and four. five. <laughs> wrong. Two. Wrong. One. Wrong. Four. Did you miss four? Wrong. Eight. Wrong. Nine. Wrong. Ten. Right. But this one I have a problem with. I feel like their math on the Snickers here was wrong, but it is listed as number 10 on this list because they say it only has 20 grams of sugar. Maybe in 2016 it did. I don't know. But it is number 10 on this list. 20 grams of sugar for the entire bar. And did I say that the uh, Twix is 24 grams of sugar, by the way? I don't know if I said that. Uh, I got that, yeah. It bears repeating. What? <laughs> Of course, of course. One of us is paying attention to your own notes and your own episode. <laughs> well, maybe if I had it printed out, I'd be more <laughs> on top of this. So, the Snickers was released in 1930 by the Mars Company. They are peanuts, caramel, and nougat enrobed in chocolate. They were the second candy bar released by the Mars Company behind Milky Way. And was my next guess. I want you to take credit for putting Milky Way in my head, because I was already <laughs> thinking of guessing that next. <laughs> eh, we'll let the listener decide uh, who incepted who on this. The name for Snickers comes from the name of the of uh, Frank Mars's one of his prized horses, Snickers. So they named it after the horse. <laughs> Mars. They do Snickers, Milky Way, M and M's, Mars do, bars. No, Hershey does Reese's. Uh, yeah. Who does Kit Kat? Is that Reese's? Uh, is that Hershey? Kit Kat is now. I think owned by Hershey, but it was a different company initially. I got to tell you, man, if I'm at the candy aisle, I will never choose a Snickers. Like, if there's a mini size Snickers in a Halloween basket, I'll eat it then. But I'm never going to go buy it myself. I just don't love it enough to pick it over any other candy. You and I are so much more alike than you ever will admit to the public because... Can you excuse me? I got to jump out a window real quick. <laughs> can, can you excuse me? I threw up all over my shirt. I acknowledge that Snickers is quote unquote the king of candy or the steak of candy as 
Greg, the co-host of Candy is Dandy, snuck it in again as he wow, describes that it. Number five. <laughs> that was number ten. It was the finish. <laughs> the tennis time. I feel Snickers is so boring and middle of the road. I as well. I would never pick a Snickers. I would never pay for a Snickers. I, I gladly eat a fun size on Halloween, but I would never willingly pay money for a Snickers because it's so boring. I'm with you. They're doing something right because everyone else is fucking picking them. I guess. You know, look at Jimmy Fallon, you know, like, look at like the most popular things are just kind of not like Candy's lowest Candy podcast. We're the Jimmy Fallon of Candy Review podcast. You, know you know how I think of Snickers? I think of Snickers similar to how I think of Pepsi. I don't know anyone. I have never been at a restaurant or a store ever. And someone just says, I'll have a Pepsi. I've, be I've been somewhere where they say, I'll have a Coke. Oh, we don't have Coke. Okay, fine, I'll have a Pepsi. But no one has ever just said Pepsi first. And I'm sure those people are out there, but I don't encounter it very often. And I feel the same way about Snickers. People are out there buying Snickers. I don't see them. I don't know who they are, but someone's out there buying them. I don't know. It's just like kind of this boring established brand that kind of feels like everyone's backup brand. I do know some people that would that do willingly say Snickers is my favorite, but I think people some people aren't very willing to be adventurous, you know? Like, it's a safe choice. And much like Jimmy Fallon, I think that's what people can just be like, okay, I won't be offended. I won't feel like I've wasted something, be it I mean, money or that 69 brain cells. cents is a, is a huge risk, I know. <laughs> For people at the candy aisle. Oh, boy. want to play it safe. Nick in his ivory tower doesn't know about shrinkflation. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Uh, in my uh, Kit Kat tower, more like. <laughs> um, well, we, t we said Milky Way. Everything I said about Snickers, I feel the same way about Milky Way. I'll never buy it first. I'll eat the fun size on Halloween. That's it. But is Milky Way on the list? Milky Way is on the list. Number nine. Wrong. Six. Seven. <laughs> no, wait. I already have seven. Eight. <laughs> so bullshit. Five. Four. Wrong. Three. Wrong. It's number two. Milky Way is number two wow. on this list with 35 grams. Such in a one boring bar. candy. Well, that explains it. There's The candy's so boring, they got to they gotta <laughs> spice it up with some sugar. Some spicy sugar. I. I um, agree that I think Milky Way is boring, but I find it to be a lot more exciting than a Snickers, oddly enough. It's kind of different. If you were to blind taste test me, well, don't blind taste <laughs> test me. <laughs> we'll both be blinded when that happens. We don't have to put blindfolds on for that. Uh, but if, if I were to have, if I were to see two naked candy bars and I didn't know which was which, I don't know if I could tell you which one's the Milky Way and which one's the Snickers because in my brain, they're like the same thing. I think from the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell. Because, uh, well, look, I'll tell you my facts. The Milky Way was invented in 1923 by Frank Mars himself, the first candy he ever made. They are nougat and caramel enrobed in chocolate. <laughs> so it's it's the same thing as a, as a Snickers, pretty much, but minus the peanuts. But the milk, the idea of the Milky Way was to recreate the taste of having a chocolate malted milkshake. So there's a slight maltiness in a Milky Way that I prefer over the blandness of a Snickers. That reminds me of another guess I'm going to have in a minute. But yes, the uh, now that you say that, I can I can picture that enrobement in my mind. Oh yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't know what that word means, but sure. <laughs> yeah, you haven't heard it before. No. <laughs> um, yeah, Milky Way number two. That surprises me. That surprises me. That is very surprising. Maybe it's the maltedness that they add to it. I don't know, but that is quite sugary for what it is. Do you have off the top of your head, if not, we can look it up real quick. Like, what's the average 2,000 calorie diet? How many grams of sugar is like the daily? I'm going to say five, maybe. <laughs> grams of sugar. 50 grams per day for oh. a 2,000 calorie diet. Yeah, so you can have a Milky Way and a Snickers and you're fine. Although it says American Heart Association recommends that men consume no more than 36 grams of added sugar per day and women consume no more than 25 grams of added sugar. Uh, and they also recommend that less than 10% of total calories come from added sugars. So yeah, how many other sugars in these candy bars do you think are natural versus added, <laughs> Daniel? <laughs> I guess that's the question. I, I mean, it, they do pick Milky Way straight off of a Milky Way tree. So it's got to <laughs> be partially natural. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I wish they thought Maybe they sugar. Add there's enough natural sugar in there. They don't need to add it. I know. It. It's nature's candy. Milky Way. <laughs> well, speaking of nature's candy, I'm going to go with my next guess of three musketeers 
Which, don't they have the kind of the multi thing going, too, a little bit? Or am I thinking of... Uh, uh, kind of. What's that thing they have in there? It's like... It there's is, something in there. It's nougat. It is oh, nougat. nougat. It's chocolate-flavored nougat inside of a Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers is on this list. Five. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Wrong. Is it number one? It is number one. It is the most sugary candy. Three wow. Musketeers has 40 grams in one bar of three musketeers you're still under the limit for added sugars then you are, these are all you natural, have, i think you could have like 3.5 musketeers per day three musketeers three musketeers if they were released my opinion on that really until you're, okay until you're done yeah, maybe my facts will change your opinion on them they were released in 1932 again by mars that's something else that mars makes they are chocolate flavored nougat enrobed in chocolate they are your <laughs> your your pronunciation your uh announcing whatever the word is of enrobed gets more and more more and more sexual as we go it started as just a throwaway word and now you are really hanging on that word i don't know what you're talking about but unrelated to that i have been getting progressively hornier as this episode has gone on <laughs> you too huh okay, okay. <laughs> that makes that makes that makes two musketeers. So they they're called three musketeers because originally they came as three pieces in three flavors. It was chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. Again, during World War II, during the sugar rationing, they had to focus on the most popular flavor, which was chocolate. You don't think the idea of strawberry three musketeers sounds good? I would love to try a strawberry three musketeers. I would. Is there none out there anywhere? I think maybe like they had a limited time thing once. But they do not make it available. I don't think it's been available for probably twenty years. And don't think I forgot that you were about to say you'd kill a man. <laughs> you'd kill a man for a strawberry <laughs> three musketeers. <laughs> uh, it doesn't take much for me to set no. me to set me off. I like. I really do like three musketeers. I like it. I don't know if it'd crack my top ten. If so, it'd be near the back. But they're boring. They're kind of boring. Yeah. And maybe maybe part of that is like. The advertising for it. Like, can you think of a Three Musketeers commercial? Can you think of a mascot? Can you think well, of a Well, they like, used to slogan? have the Three Musketeers. Yeah, I remember like in the <laughs> 90s, I remember seeing like the Three Musketeers like animated, I want to yeah, say. What, you never watched the Howdy Doody show? Well, it's just, it's curious. You don't see it advertised ever. Like, I, if you watch something on YouTube or even, God forbid, cable TV or something, something that has commercials. It is not too uncommon to see a Reese's or a Snickers commercial, even a Twix, but I cannot recall the last time I saw anything for Three Musketeers. It's because we all know and love them, so we don't need to be reminded. But like, what, what's, like, what is the corporate decision process behind that? I don't know. I know for a while they were, because they were kind of marketing themselves as like the healthy candy bar, because there's not a lot of fat in it. Oh, yeah, of course. But then it has the most sugar of any candy bar. <laughs> yes. So that was the marketing for a while. But I think America doesn't want to be healthy anymore. I remember when Dr. Pepper came out, I want to say the 1800s, they were marketed as a healthy drink. That's why it's called Dr. Pepper. I'm not kidding. <laughs> well, this used to be uh, Three Musketeers MD. It's the original name. <laughs> the idea that a chocolate bar could market itself as healthy and has 40 grams of sugar, it's just... It's bold. It's a, it's it's bold. a bold swing. It's bold, for sure. <laughs> but the reason you think that they're similar to Milky Way, I think, is because they were also kind of meant to... Because when you freeze them, it, it basically turns into ice cream, like you're eating chocolate ice cream. So it was also kind of a thing to kind of recreate the flavor of eating chocolate ice cream. Right. I don't freeze my chocolate bars because I'm not a serial killer, but it, it's nice to know if I were to someday take up murdering innocent people that in succession that I might also then start to freeze my chocolate bars. Interesting. Okay. It's a whole other world out there for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what I thought was number one, will be my next guess, and that is the classic Hershey chocolate bar. It's not number one. I can tell you yeah, that much. Yeah, not number one. It's got... Okay, I'll go four. You're wrong. You're Three. just so wrong. Wrong. Five. Wrong. Six. It is one of the ones tied for six. Okay, I knew it. Maybe I wonder, because I, I don't want to I don't want to have to rush things at the end, so maybe I shouldn't give you the factoids on the ones that you already, that are one of the tied ones. Tell me the facts on Hershey. So, a, a regular, again, tied for at four, at 24 grams. This was released in 1900 by Milton Hershey. This is milk chocolate enrobed in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> 
You need to start <laughs> moaning the next time you say it. <laughs> Hershey's goal was to mass produce chocolate to make it affordable for the unwashed masses. And today they sell 373 million of these a year. Do you know if it's the best selling? I don't know about just like a bar of chocolate. I think the best selling candy in the United States are Reese's peanut butter cups. And I think worldwide, it might actually be Snickers. Interesting. The Hershey bar... I used to, what I was saying earlier about Snickers, how I'd never just go buy a Snickers at a candy aisle. I used to be that way with Hershey bar, but lately I've come to sort of appreciate it more. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it just tastes like pure chocolate. I know it's not pure chocolate, but it tastes just like there's no interruptions. There's no distractions. I don't need nuts. I don't need wafers. Just give me the chocolate. And I like a good Hershey bar is probably top five for me. Really? That My grandma used to always have just a plain Hershey bar. And I think you're approaching my grandma stage of your life. Well, at least I'm not printing out my notes for a podcast. But <laughs> My grandma had teleprompters whenever she would do anything. Whenever she was doing her podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I've had a teleprompter up this whole time. Like, everything I've said so far has been pre-scripted. Meticulously scripted. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, people put down the quality of Hershey's chocolate. I'm kind of okay with it. I, I don't mind it that much. I know it's not the best chocolate, but I, I like it. Me too. And I love the cookies and cream variety. That's actually my favorite. But yeah, just the, the classic plain Jane, you know, kind of boring Hershey chocolate bar. It's the it's it's not the best selling, doesn't sound like, but it's one of them. And they definitely it was popular enough to have a whole fucking city in Pennsylvania named after them. And an amusement park. Yeah, I've been there. Have you been to Hershey's Chocolate World? I I, I would love to go to Hershey's Chocolate World with you. It's actually pretty fun. Let's go. Let's put this You'll on wait pause. in the car. <laughs> I don't want to be seen in there with you. I'm going to have to be dressed as a Hershey's Kiss the entire <laughs> time <clears throat> so that nobody it, knows. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, as much as I love the Hershey bar, Hershey Kisses can go fuck themselves because, well, look, I like the taste. But if you think I'm going to sit here and fucking unwrap a thousand fucking of these little things and get like the little foil trash everywhere, because it like breaks apart when you open it. It's so annoying. It's terrible for the environment, but I do like to work for my food a little bit, you know? You feel like an uh, anim- uh, like a carnivore in the wild when I you're do. having to... <laughs> when I've hunted down a fresh Hershey's Kiss and I unwrap it gently i'll tell you if they were to sell the maybe they have these and i just haven't seen them but if they were to sell in a big bag like unwrapped hershey kisses like i know um reese's does that now with the little mini reese's yes um, the ones that you typically would unwrap they have those just unwrapped in a big bag if they had that for hershey kisses i'd be all over i feel like that that's going to be a gross sensation to reach into you know because they're going to start melting and it's just going to be like oh here's (laughs) here's your sack of brown goo (laughs) To bring to the movie, to smear on your wrists and go to the movie theater. Hey, you signed me up. I, I don't know. Wait, you think this is bad? This sounds great. <laughs> Were you trying to threaten me with a disgusting time? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you talk about putting your hand in a bag of brown goo. People are willingly sexually putting their fists into asses and vaginas and all kinds of shit. Like, what's wrong with sticking it in a bag of, of yeah, chocolate? I'm talking. I'm talking about, I don't want to do gross things here. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, my bad. Well, I'm a fan of the Hershey bar, and I'm glad it's on this list. It does not, it's not my number one, but it deserves a mention today. Hi, I'm Alex Johns. And if you're anything like me, you need more. More what? Well, more tennis podcasts, of course. We all know tennis podcasts has well over 250 episodes, but there is actually way more than that. There are about 70 extra episodes of Tennis Podcasts available right now that can only be heard as a Tennis Pod Plus member. These extra episodes cover everything from the top 10 highest grossing movies starring a cat, to the top 10 ways your house can kill you, to the top 10 most adorable Pokemon. There's also episodes that step away from list guessing completely, like when Nick and I covered the history of human sewage and sanitation, or when Nick and Brandon reacted to trending urban dictionary definitions. You can unlock instant access to all these bonus episodes with more added every month right now by joining Tennis Pod Plus. It's easy. If you're listening to me on Apple Podcasts, just tap the try free button at the top of our page on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on any other podcasting app, then go to TennisPod.com slash plus. Signing up takes 10 seconds and you can listen to these bonus episodes right on the very app you're already listening on. By the way, Tennis Pod Plus membership includes other perks too. All episodes are ad-free, 
you get episodes early before anyone else, and you can even get Dr. Buster's exclusive podcast, The Book Buster. Go to TennisPod.com slash plus to learn more and sign up for a free seven-day trial. That's TennisPod.com slash P-L-U-S. There's so many spots left on this list. Let's do a quick recap where we stand. So you've got number one of Three Musketeers. You've got Mm -hmm. number two of Milky Way. You have number six, which is a Hershey bar and a Twix. You have number seven, which is Crunch. You have number nine, which is a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup or a Kit Kat. And you have number 10, which is Snickers. So So you still have mm -hmm. number three, four, five, and eight. And there are some more tied for six and nine if you happen to step on those landmines. So this top 10 list is really a top 100 list. I feel like I've hit all the heaviest (laughs) hitters brand name wise. Um, Um, There's a few... There's there's at least two very big names that you're forgetting here. What about 100 grand? 100 grand is here, and that is not one of the big names I thought you were going to get, but that is on this list. I don't consider it a huge name either, but I, I was trying to think of like what do I see at the cashier when I'm checking out at a store? There's always 100 grand there. Sticking them up, what do you see in the register? <laughs> 100 <Sticking> grand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh wait, I forgot we're talking about candy. Um, 100 grand's got to be number 8 or 9. It is number eight. You nailed it. I that knew was it. impressive even, even to me. A 100 grand has 22 grams of sugar in them. Talk about a boring candy. They're kind of boring, but they're, they're so kind of rare for me to have them that it's exciting when I do. They don't taste great, but they're exciting to me. <laughs> what you said does not... Logic does not follow that, but okay. <laughs> it's almost like a novelty, you know? Like, if I had to pick between a Snickers or a hundred grand, I'm going with a hundred grand. I think I'd go a hundred grand in that case, yeah. It's kind of exciting. So, the hundred grand was released by Nestle in 1964. They are caramel, enrobed in milk chocolate. <laughs> With crisped rice mixed into the milk chocolate. I think you pulled your groin on that one. (laughs) I've got a sack of brown goo (laughs) right next to me now. So the name was inspired by a game show in the 50s called The Big Surprise, where the grand prize was $100,000. It used to be called the $100,000 bar, but they had like trouble copywriting that. So they renamed it. Yeah, I think the name's dumb. But it's it's a fine candy, but I it's not a first choice for me ever. Oh, never, never. Ne- not even not top 10 obviously, but it's uh, it's another thing where if it's in if it's there on Halloween, I'll be excited to try yeah. one. But that's like my one time a year I'm going to try one. Well, I'm trying to think. You said there's some other big brands on here that I'm forgetting. Are we including like the M&M candy bar? You know they have like that chocolate bar? Not the candy bar. M&M's is not a chocolate bar. Again, this list got very loose. Okay. But M&M's wow. are on the list. Then they're number two. All right, sorry, Wrong. three. We have two already. Uh, so close, as four. I say. It is number four. Regular milk chocolate M&M's have 31 grams in one pack. This is where you jump the shark, Daniel, because there's no way, like, even I won't accept M&M's as a candy bar. This and the Snickers thing I have the biggest problems with, but they are considering it to be, I mean, if, tw- if, um, if Reese's are a candy bar. But at least there's like like a round bar there, like a circle bar, <laughs> you know? There's something you bite into. Yeah, true. I mean, you if you shove enough in your hand, it's it's like eating a bar. You know, well, fuck, you are like cupcakes a chocolate bar now? I mean, like, where do we stop? Where does this well, end? Well, cupcakes are tied for number six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so M&M's, the regular milk chocolate, were released in 1941. They are little gems of chocolate. Hmm. Enrobed in a candy coating, not in chocolate this time. The the first you went from M, sexual to like an active discomfort. Is Maybe that both. How it goes? <laughs> yeah. The first M in the name stands for one of the two creators, Forrest Mars Senior, who is the son of Frank Mars, who's the guy who started the Mars Company. The second stands for Bruce Murray, who is the son of the president of rival company Hershey. So these two teamed up and made M and M's together. Because I think uh, Forrest Mars hated his dad or something. I don't know. Some, it's, there's some drama there. They were inspired by small chocolate beads covered in sugar that Mars, Forrest Mars, saw British volunteers that were fighting in the Spanish Civil War would eat as rations because they wouldn't melt. So that was the inspiration for M&M's. Melts in your hand. Or sorry, melted your mouth, not in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
melts in your trench. <laughs> <not> in your- <laughs> well, it's like that's why M and M had started to manufacture the big brown bag of goo that we were talking about, but they decided world wasn't ready for that yet. Maybe after uh, World War Three, the world will be <laughs> ready yeah. for this, <laughs> which is like next year, I think. Um, <laughs> it's it, it thanks, yeah. Obama, but it, there's no way it could be considered a chocolate bar. But it is common enough. I see what they were going for. It's common enough, and uh, when we were talking about best selling, I'm actually kind of surprised M and M isn't the best selling candy. But really, I I mean, I love. I think peanut M and M's may be my favorite candy if not tied with reese's peanut butter cups right. we, we talked on our candy draft about how your opinion on that is wrong and uh, peanut butter m&ms are actually the best but yes See, this is your reese's pc's fanboyism coming out if you put peanut butter on something my ass is eating it and i'm gonna love it i thought this including was my t- palm I thought this was turning into your Jeff Foxworthy impression. <laughs> if you put peanut butter on my palm, <laughs> I will vigorously lick it off with no shame. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. Well, M and M's. I'm skeptical of it, but it, it's. I, I see what they were going for. So the other big brand that I'm missing is it also kind of a weird it one is, like M and M's? No, it is undeniably a a, a candy slash chocolate bar. What so you remember, call you, it? That's a candy. You this know that is one? your this is your Frankenweenie moment <laughs> that you guessed what you call it, and I said it was a big brand name. <laughs> Frankenweenie moment, it really was. <laughs> what you call it? A candy that most people don't even know what you're talking about when you bring it up. <laughs> it's a Frankenweenie moment because when Daniel was here guessing the top ten movies watched during <laughs> Halloween, he somehow guessed Frankenweenie <laughs> over movies like Beetlejuice well, and Hocus I th- Pocus. I, I think your clue was it's a really popular tim burton halloween movie <laughs> and you're like frankenweenie obviously okay well i could have just said no you didn't have to <laughs> you started all this give me a hint on the big brand that I'm um missing. i was going to say something that might come out as as uh it might be interpreted wrong so i'm going to say a cartoon family <laughs> oh, rather than uh, butterfinger. The color. butterfinger butterfinger that's high number three it is not number three Number five. It is number five. Those things just taste like sugar. Like, I feel like of all the ones, that's the one where I can taste the sugar most. Especially since they've kind of rebranded, or they, this is the one that I hinted that they retooled the recipe and changed things. So, a Butterfinger has 28 grams of sugar. They were released in 1923. They are a mixture of molasses and cornflakes. Oh, God. Enrobed, <laughs> enrobed in chocolate. They they were made by the Curtis Candy Candy Company, and uh, this is my big go to fact about Butterfingers. So for for publicity, they used to drop Butterfingers out of airplanes on people. Okay, <laughs> and on one of these trips, some kid won a contest and got to ride along on one of the airplanes and this was his first trip on an airplane this kid was paul tibbetts who went on to fly the airplane that dropped the atomic bomb on hiroshima oh god damn that got dark yeah. quick so, so that's that, that's so my finger big... inspired him to <laughs> nobody lays a bomb finger an on... innocent <laughs> village nobody village lays a city. finger on my pacific ocean that is a fun little factoid huh i bet not many people know that it is crazy and disturbing, but it is true. Yeah, Butterfinger, I used... To, this was one where we did an episode on Butterfinger on the oh, hit. You just went podcast. straight from the <laughs> murder of like 100,000 people in Japan. And without a, <laughs> without a hit, you w- jumped right into your opinions on Butterfinger's flavor. And a plug for my podcast. <laughs> Same time. I just wanted to underline that. Please go on. Well, when you freeze as much chocolate in the freezer as I do, you, this sort of stuff just rolls right off of you. Um, I, I, when we did the Butterfinger one, this was one where I came in like, guys, this is my favorite candy bar, I think. And none of us really liked it when we tried it because they changed the recipe when they were bought by the, I think, Ferrero company. They completely retooled the recipe and it is definitely not as good as it used to be. I haven't had one in a long time. So I wonder if I'd have the same experience because I re- I remember liking them quite a bit. You're not going to like it as much. <laughs> I can tell you right now. So the only one, you just have number three left here, and this one is kind of tricky, but I will give you a little hint. It is the sister candy to the Butterfinger, and you can interpret that how you will. Is it round? No. It's a bar shape? (laughs) It is a bar shape, and this one also does stretch the definition of a chocolate bar, but it is a bar. Is it literally a bar, or is it 
in pieces like M and M's. It's, it's. I mean, it could be in pieces depending on what happens to it. Man, but I don't know this. It's, it, it's almost. It's a bar, but it it is maybe more tubular, more rounded on the edges. No, those are pieces. They come in a tube. Though. You stupid idiot. They do come in a tube. <laughs> I don't know. You might have to just tell me this one. I can't. I can't do that. I can't give you that. Uh, let me try to think of a, a hint that won't give too much away. Peanuts. <laughs> Payday. So close. Payday actually is uh, tied for number nine. That is the third number nine. There's no chocolate on it. But it is very close to a payday. Keep that in mind. Wait a minute. I I take that back. There is chocolate on this one. (laughs) I was thinking of a payday. I was thinking of a payday which doesn't have chocolate. This one does have chocolate on it. (laughs) What's it start with? I feel like it's going to give you too much. Think of um, the crack of the bat. Baseball. Going God. Oh, what is that? Like, I, my mind's trying to to grab onto that, but I can't place it. You're so close. You're literally in the park, the ballpark. Oh, my it fucking is a, God. People it, are yelling it, it out at me right now. <laughs> I cannot it, yeah. place it. Man, this feels so good. Um, I, wish I, could, <laughs> I wish I could get this in a brown bag of goo. <laughs> it is almost named after a famous person oh, from Babe the ballpark. Ruth. Babe Ruth. Um, uh, close. Or Baby but Ruth. What is, Baby Ruth is number three on this list. <laughs> you really weren't going to give me Babe Ruth for Baby Ruth? You were going to make me keep going? Well, well, you've never had a Mickey Mantle bar? This there that, that is part of the story with the Baby Ruth. So those have 32 grams of sugar in them. They were released in 1921 by the Curtis Candy Company. So this was the precursor to the Butterfinger. Or rather, the Butterfinger was the follow-up to the Baby Ruth. They are nougats, peanuts, caramel enrobed in chocolate <laughs> you're you're only supposed to struggle on enrobed so you cheated there i know but it it's uh the the struggle is expanding to everything the so the name of this thing it's been the center of a lot of controversy when it came out babe ruth the great bambino the sultan of swat was in his prime so it was clearly the mar- a marketing ploy to confuse people into thinking you were eating a piece of babe ruth or whatever <laughs> and <laughs> Enjoy Wait, the this whole time i thought they had froze his body and every once in a while the the yeah. baby ruth factory goes and chips off a little more of his body as well, needed they, they regrow more using the mother ruth that <laughs> oh, okay. they have they have in a jar so it, it the confusion worked and made them popular but babe ruth wasn't happy that he wasn't getting money from it so he made his own candy called ruth's home run candy with a note on it saying babe ruth's own candy and the Curtis Company sued them and said their candy wasn't named after him, but rather after former President Grover Cleveland's daughter, Baby Ruth, who died of diphtheria at age 12 in 1904. That was their defense, is no, it's named after Grover Cleveland's dead daughter. Did they win with that argument? They won. Oh my god. I, that's a good lawyer they had, because there's no fucking way anyone bought that. Because it came it's out during immunity. Babe Ruth's peak, too, right? right yeah, it did. Like, like in his yeah. heyday. So, I mean, prove that it is named after Babe Ruth. Right, Hmm? right. Okay. Well, I mean, wasn't it marketed like with baseball theme too? (laughs) I actually don't know. It had a picture of someone who looked kind of like Babe Ruth, (laughs) but he had a mole instead. Yeah, that's... Fuck. These are good fun facts, Daniel. I gotta say, I really doubted you coming into this, but you've brought it with the fun facts. You know, I doubted myself too, but I, I, I think we both learned a lot about me in this well about candy where does one begin and the other ends <laughs> yeah that is the age-old question i agree so do you want to hear the the modern day amounts of sugar yes, in these please so today three musketeers has gone down to 37 grams of sugar okay. milky way has gone down to 32 grams babe ruth gone, went down to 28 m&m's holding strong at 31 grams butterfinger has gone down to 21 grams hershey has gone up to 25 Wow. Twix has gone up to 25. Crunch Bar has gone up to 24. 100 Grand still at 22. Reese has gone up to 22. Uh, uh, you guessed Payday went up to 22. Kit Kat went up to 22. Now, Snickers is 28. So that's a big difference from what they were saying. They were at so 20. So that's why... And it was at 20 and it's now 28 so i really have my qualms with uh I've, i think i've said that word twice and that's the only word i've repeated during this episode. <laughs> drink every time you've heard qualms on this episode and no other words would make a better 
choice for a drinking game. The, the <laughs> biggest, so it looks like the biggest increase was Snickers from 20 grams to 28, and the biggest decrease was Butterfinger from 28 to 21. And that's because of the um, change in the recipe for the Butterfinger. They they made significant changes to it. The other ones tied for six that you didn't get were Heath Bar, Mounds, and Almond Joy were tied at 24 grams. Almond Joy. I'd like to punch yeah. whoever buys that. <laughs> So uh, let, let's end the episode by quickly recapping the whole list for me. Okay. So we well, got I guess it. You kind of just one. did that, didn't you? Because you just went, uh, you just went in order of there. I did. Hey, I'll say it again. People, people love hearing my voice. The reviews are. Let's in. just do the top five. The top. So we've got number one at Three Musketeers, or Three Musketeers at number one. Milky Way at number two. Baby Ruth at number three. Named after, obviously, <laughs> President Grover Cleveland's, Cleveland's daughter Cleveland's. who died of diphtheria. <laughs> I mean, perfect inspiration for a chocolate bar, of course. Who doesn't want chocolate after hearing that? Number four is regular milk chocolate M&Ms. Number five is Butterfinger. And if you want to go further, I'll just say that my personal favorite, my top three personal favorites are number one, Reese's. Number two, Kit Kat. Number three, Hershey Bar. I would say my number one would be Reese's, obviously. My number two would obviously be a Baby Ruth. Um, Really? No. Number two would be regular M&M's. And number three, uh, Kit Kat. I'll put Kit Kat at number three. I'd put peanut butter M&M's above the Hershey Bar. Uh, But regular M&M's, I'd put behind the Hershey Bar. Well, Daniel, this was a list. That we <laughs> talked about today. And the listener can decide who sounded stupider <laughs> throughout the course of this Let us journey. know <laughs> on social media. You can follow me at Tennis Pod. That's uh, at 10ISHPOD on your favorite podcast platform or t- your favorite social <laughs> platform. And you can also rate us five stars and leave a review. Please leave a review, a good one, and let me know how dumb Daniel was on this episode. And Daniel, I don't think you've mentioned yet what podcast you may or may not host. Um, yeah, you haven't stuck wanna... in any plugs of any kind. So just if you want to really quickly tell the folks about your podcast, I just like to enrobe this episode by <laughs> mentioning that you can listen to me talk about more candy on the Candy is Dandy Candy Review podcast anywhere you get your podcast. We do review a different candy each week, give its history, taste them. I would say that, listener, if you enjoyed this episode, there's a pretty good chance you will enjoy Candy is Dandy, so I hope you'll check it out. There's a link in the show notes as well. If you're lazy and you just want a shortcut to the podcast, Daniel, I'll think about having you on again in the future. I need to, <laughs> I need to, I need to really think about today's episode and how I feel about it. This is going to take some processing and <laughs> therapy. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have to process my thoughts on this, much like these candy manufacturers process their chocolate bars. Except Milky Way, which comes off of trees. Exactly. Uh, Okay, well, let's end it there. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Yeah, me too. See you next week.